It is finally here. This video, we're going to be talking about JWT authentication using Node.js and Express. And we're going to be breaking this into two separate parts. In the first part, we're just going to do a simple JWT authentication where we create tokens, send tokens to users, and authenticate those tokens on our server. And in the second part, we're going to talk about how we can use a refresh token in order to automatically refresh our JWT tokens to increase the security of our server and also revoke privileges from users that we no longer want to access our server, similar to how a logout function works. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video so you get both parts of this video. So with that out of the way, let's get started. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my goal is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream projects sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. And for this video, as always, I have Visual Studio Code opened up, completely blank folder, so we can start this project. And the very first thing we need to do is initialize this project with npm. So if we just type npm init-y, it's going to initialize our project with all the default settings. And now we can install the libraries that we're going to be using. The libraries we're going to be using, as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be using express. So if you type npm i express, we also are going to be using a library called JSON Web Token, all one word. And then lastly, we're going to install .env. And this is just going to allow us to use a .env file, which is going to contain our secret tokens for JWT. So we can just create that now, .env. And this is where we're going to put those secret tokens. Lastly, we're going to install a development dependency, npm i dash dash save dev. And this is called Nodemon. And what Nodemon lets us do is automatically refresh our server every time we make changes to it, so we don't have to manually close and restart our server ourselves. And as soon as that finishes downloading, we're going to create a script which is going to allow us to start our server using Nodemon really easily. And we're going to do that on a file called server.json. This is going to be our main server file. So now inside our package.json, you can see all of our dependencies are showing up in here. And we can just come down here and type in dev start. And we want this command to be nodemon, and it's going to run our server.json file. So this is going to run our server.json using nodemon, and we can start that by just running npm run dev start, and it's going to run that file for us. And of course, we're getting an error because I forgot to save my package.json. Now let's run that again. And as you can see, it started up our server, and since we have nothing in it, it just exited out, which is fine. Now as we make changes, for example, if we put a console.log, put hi in here, save it, you can see that it's actually refreshing our server every time. So to get started with our server, we want to first import Express. We can just do that by requiring the Express library. And in order to set up an Express server, we need to get the app variable, which is going to come from Express. So we can just call the Express function and then say app.listen and tell it we want to listen, for example, on port 3000. Now we have an application running on port 3000, but of course it doesn't do anything yet. In order to get our application up and running, let's actually just create a simple route, an app.get route, and this is going to get all of the post inside of our application. And this is of course going to have a request and a response variable, whoops, response. And inside of here, we can just run a function. And inside of this function, all we want to do is return a list of post. So let's just create a variable, which is going to have all of our post inside of it just like this, and this is just going to be an array with objects. We're going to have a username for the person that created the post, so for example me, and we're going to have a title for that. We can just say post1, and let's just put two posts in here for now. So if I just copy this down, and we're going to change this username here to be Jim. There we go, and of course the title should be post2. And inside of our app.get, we can just return that, so we can say res.json, and we want to return our post. Now if we save that, create a new file called request.rest, whoops, .rest, not reset. Let me change that real quick. There we go. And this is going to allow us to make rest request, API request to our API. You can use something else like Postman, but because I have the extension installed in Visual Studio Code called rest client down here, it allows me to just use a .rest file to make these calls. And this .rest file is really simple. We can just say we want to make a git request to HTTP, localhost, port 3000, and we just want slash post. So now if we send that request, you can see we get the list of our post back for us, so we know that our application is working and running properly. 
Now the next thing for us to do is to actually authenticate our request using JWT so that we don't let everyone access the post and only specific users. So we can just create a route to do that. We can say app.get, and this is going to be our login route. And of course, it's going to take a request and a response. And the very first thing you do in this login route is you want to authenticate the user. And in our case, I've already done a video on user authentication using passwords and usernames. So if you want to check that out, it's going to be in the cards and the description below. So we're just going to ignore this portion of the authentication so we can focus purely on how JWT works in the authentication process. So the next thing we need to do is actually create that JSON web token. And to do that, we want to require that library we used earlier. So we can say const and we want just JWT, which is equal to require of JSON web token. Also, since we're going to be passing JSON to this app.get, we need to make sure our server can handle that. So we can say app.use and we want to pass in express.json. This just lets our application actually use JSON from the body that gets passed up to it inside of request. And we're gonna change this to be a post actually instead of a git since we actually want to create a token so post makes more sense than git. Now inside of here, we wanna get the username. So we can say const username is equal to request.body.username. And now normally you would make sure you authenticate the user first, but as I mentioned, that's going to be in a separate video, which I've already done and you can check out. Now that we know this user has access to our application and has passed the correct username and password, we want to authenticate and serialize this user with JSON web tokens. Now, if you are not already familiar with JSON web tokens and how they work, I have an entire video talking about why you should use JSON web tokens and how they work. So you can check that out again, linked in the cards and the description below. For this purpose of the video, we're just going to worry about the implementation of JSON web tokens. And it's really actually quite easy to create a JSON web token. We just use that JWT library and we pass it dot sign. And the sign is first going to take our payload, which is essentially what we want to serialize. And we want to serialize a user object. So let's just create a user. And this user is going to be equal to here, just an object which has name. And we want to pass that as our username. And now we can say that we want to serialize our user. And in order to serialize them, we need some kind of secret key. This is going to be the next parameter. And we're going to get this from our environment variables. So process.env.access, whoops, access token secret, just like that. And we can create this in our .env. We can say access token secret, and we need to set this to some form of secret value. And a really easy way to create a secret value is using the crypt library inside of Node.js. So what we can do is just open up another terminal. And if we just run node, here we can just run any Node.js code we want to. And we can require the crypto library and all we want to do is we want to get some random bytes. So we can say random bytes. Let's just say that we want to get 64 of them. And then we want to convert this to a string, which is going to be an hexadecimal. Now if we hit enter, this is just going to give us a random list of characters. If we run it again, you see we get a completely different random list of characters. We can just copy this up as our access token secret. And since we're going to be doing refresh tokens later in this video, let's set up our secret for our refresh token as well. We'll just use this other value so that these have two different secrets. That's really all that you need to make sure is that the secrets for both of these are completely different. Now we can save that and go back into our JWT sign. And right now this is complete. We could add an expiration date to our token, but since we don't have any way to refresh our tokens yet, we don't want to add any form of expiration date. So we can just say that this is going to be our access token. And what we want to do is just return that. So we can say res.json and we want to pass down our access token as our JSON. So now when we make a request to log in, whatever username we pass up, assuming it's authenticated correctly, it's going to create an access token for us. And that access token is going to have the user information saved inside of it. That's what we're doing with our sign here. So let's go over and actually test this. If we just put in here three hashtags like that, anything that comes after it is going to be a different request. So we can just say post. We want to post to this HTTP localhost. 3000 and this time we want to do a login and we want our content type here to be json so we can just say application slash json and then in our body we need to pass up that username so let's type in username and let's just say we want to do kyle for example now if we send that request you can see we're getting an error secret or private key must have a value and this is because we're never actually loading our env variables into our process env variable here and we can actually do that really easily just at the very top of our application. 
we just want to put require and we want to put dot env dot config. Now, if we save that and make our request, this should work. And there you go. You can see we have an access token being returned to us that has no expiration date, though it has the user information saved in it. So we can access any of our endpoints with this user information here. So now in order to test that, let's actually create some middleware, which we're going to put on our post here, which is going to authenticate our token. So we can take a function here. We're going to call it authenticate, whoops, authenticate token. And of course, since it's a middleware, it's going to take request, response, and next. And then inside of this function, all we need to do is we want to get the token that they send us. We want to verify that this is the correct user. And then we want to return that user up into the function here for get post. So we can call that authenticate token function as our middleware. So we know we have that in our post. And now inside of this function, we need to get the token. And this token is going to come from the header. And we're going to have a header called bearer. So it's going to say bearer, and then it's going to have our token afterwards. So this string over here, our token, is going to come after the keyword bearer. And that's going to be in our authorization header. So in order to get this header, we can just say const auth header is going to be equal to request. And we want to get the headers. And then from that headers, we actually want to get the authorization header, which is going to have the format of bearer followed by our token. So then all we want to do is get our token portion. So what we need to do is say that our token is going to be equal to auth header, whoops, auth header, just like that. And we want to get this split. So we're going to split it here on a space, because as you know, there's a space between bearer and token. And we want to get the second parameter in that array. So we just say oh, one over here. And this is going to be this token portion of our bearer token. And in order to make sure that we actually have a header, we first need to do auth header and, and essentially what this is saying is if we have an auth header, then return the auth header token portion, which we split on the space. Otherwise, just return undefined. So our token is either going to be undefined or it's going to be the actual token. So we can do a check to make sure to see if our token is null. So if our token is null, we just want to return to the user an error code saying that they don't have access. So we can say send status and we want to send a 401 status code so that we know that they have not sent a token to us. Now, if we get to the portion after this token check, we know that we have a valid token so we need to verify that token. We can do that with JWT verify, and we want to pass it the token as well as the secret that we actually hashed that token with. So we can just say process.env.access token secret. And this is going to take a callback, which has an error, and it's going to have the value we serialized, which in our case is this user object. So it's going to have our user as well as an error. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is check if we have an error. And if we do, we want to return another status code to the user saying they don't have access. So we're going to send a status. And this is going to be a 403, which essentially says that we see that you have a token, but this token is no longer valid, so you do not have access. Now, if we get past this, we know that we have a valid token. So we can set our user on our request. We can say request.user is going to be equal to this user object, so we know we have a user. And we can just call next, just like that so that we can actually move on from our middleware. Now, if we save that, make sure that this is next instead of next. I accidentally misspelled that. Up here, we now have access to our user. We can say request.user to get our user. So let's actually filter the list of posts. We can say dot filter. And we want this, of course, to be a post. And all we want to do is get the post where the username is equal to request.user.name. So this is only going to return the post that the user has access to. So if we log in as Kyle, we'll get post one. If we log in as Jim, we'll get post two. And if we log in as anyone else, we won't get any post at all. So let's test that. All we need to do is send a request to log in. We're going to get an access token. Let's just copy that. And up here, inside of our post, we want to send along the authorization header. And as you remember, it goes bearer. And then we paste our token after that. Now, if we save that and request our post, you see we're only getting the post for Kyle because we've logged in as Kyle. Let's log in as Jim, send that request, copy over Jim's access token, and paste this in here, and we should get back just Jim's post. So now we know that our authorization and authentication using JSON web tokens is working properly, it's saving our user, and everything is great. In order to further emphasize the power of JSON web tokens and how you can use them across many different servers, let's just go into our package.json and create a dev start script 2 here. And we want to start up server2.json, which we're just going to copy this server.json, rename this to server2.js, 
And all we're going to do down here is change our listen to be on port 4000. So now let's start that up. We can just say npm run dev start two, hit enter, and now we have two different servers. Whoops, make sure I save my package JSON, rerun that. And now we have two different servers, run on port 3000 and one on port 4000. And the key thing is they both share the same access token secret. So what we can do is inside a request, we can actually log in on our port 3000. As you can see here, our login worked correctly. Copy over this token. We can use this on our other server at port 4000. And if we send a request, it still works. This is something that you can't do very well when you use session-based authentication because your session is saved on that particular server. But with JWT, all the information is in the token, so we can actually use it across multiple different servers. So what we're gonna do next is implement refresh tokens, which allow us to actually take our authentication server and move it outside of our other third server. So we can have one server which handles all of our creation of tokens, deletion of tokens, and refreshing of tokens, and another server which handles only our specific use case of getting post, saving post, all of our different API related tasks, but not authentication. So in order to do that, let's rename server two here to auth server. So we know that this server, auth server, is only gonna be for authentication, and our normal server is going to be for everything that's not authentication. So what we can do immediately is remove our login section from this server, and there we go. Now our normal server, all it has is the git for post, and we can authenticate our token, but it has nothing else inside of it. We can just save that. In our package.json here, we want to change our dev start to be dev start auth. So we have our normal dev start and then our auth one, which is going to be starting our auth server.js. And of course, let's just cancel out of this and make sure we run our dev start auth. And now it should start up our auth server and our other server is already running on a different port. So we have our server running port 3000 and now our auth server is running on port 4000 here. And in our auth server, we can actually remove all of this post related code because we're no longer going to be allowing post on this server. It's only going to be login, logout, and refresh tokens. So before we start building and implementing our refresh tokens, I need to talk a little bit about why we need a refresh token. Right now, when we create a token, it has no expiration date, which means anyone with access to that token will have forever access to that user's account and they can just constantly make requests as if they were that user as long as they have that access token. It's very difficult to secure that because they just have infinite forever access. It'd be like giving up your API key when you're accessing an API. The user just now has access forever. The idea of a refresh token is that you save the refresh token in a safe spot and then your normal access tokens here have a very short expiration date. So that if someone gets access to your access token, they only have access to your account for maybe a few minutes before the access is revoked and then the user must use the refresh token to get a new token. And now this does have the same problems where your token could get stolen and someone else could use that token to refresh your token, but that's where the idea of invalidating a refresh token is. You can essentially create a logout route which deletes a refresh token so that the user now can no longer use that refresh token. Essentially it removes it from the list of valid refresh tokens. So really the main reason to use a refresh token is so that you can invalidate users that steal access that shouldn't have access. And the second reason is so that you can take all your authentication and authorization code and move it away from your normal server. As you can see, we have two different servers and one is specifically for authorization. So you can scale these servers separately. If you have a lot of authorization, you can make your authorization server bigger without having to make your other servers bigger as well. It's really great for when you want to deal with micro architectures or things like that. So the first thing we need to do is let's just create a function which creates an access token for us. And we also don't need this function for authenticating. So let's just create over top of this a function which is going to generate access token and we're going to pass it the user we're going to generate this token for. And this code is going to be very similar to this code right here. Let's copy this down. We want to make sure we return this. And the only extra thing we need to do is add in an expiration date. So we can just say expires in and for our use case, we can put anything, for example, 10 minutes. Usually you're gonna have some short minute range, maybe 10, 15 minutes. But we're gonna just set this to 15 seconds, just so I can easily show you how the tokens expire and how you can refresh them. But again, you would want to make this much longer in a real application, something like 10, 15 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, whatever works well for your use case. Now that we have that done, let's just change this code up here to call that function to generate our access token. And now everything's working fine but our token's gonna expire in 15 seconds. 
So we need to create a refresh token. Let's just do that right here. We can create a refresh token. And this is just going to be equal to jwt.sign. And we want to sign a user. We essentially want to put the same user inside of both tokens. So we can easily create a new token from our refresh token, which uses the same user. We also want to go to the environment variables and we want to get our refresh token secret so that we can serialize this. And we don't want to put an expiration date on our refresh token. We're going to manually handle the expiration of these refresh tokens and we don't want JWT to do that for us. Now, the last thing to do is to return this refresh token to our user, just like that. And now if we go over to our request and we make a post on localhost, this is going to be 4,000 to log in. If we send that request, you can see we now get an access token and a refresh token back. And let's make sure we change this back to 3,000 for post. And if we try to make a request, this is most likely going to fail since I don't think I got it quick enough. Okay, I did. So it hasn't expired yet. But if we keep sending the request, you can see after 15 seconds, we're now forbidden from accessing this route. And we need to use our refresh token to create a new one. So now let's go over to our auth server. And we need to create a new function. This is going to be app.post. And we want to post token. So essentially, this is going to be for creating a new token. It's going to be a request and a response. And inside of here, we're going to take in a refresh token. So we can get a refresh token. This is going to be equal to request.body.token. And this request is going to look just like this. Let's actually just create a really sample request. We're going to post to HTTP slash slash localhost 4000. We want to post to token. And we're going to, of course, make sure our content type is going to be set to JSON. And inside of our JSON, we're going to pass a token. And that token is going to be our refresh token. Right now we don't have one, but if we were to make a request here, for example, here is a refresh token we can use, and we could paste that in there, and this would pass up that refresh token to our auth server here. And we need to use that refresh token and check to see if we already have a refresh token that exists for that. So normally you'd want to store your refresh tokens in some form of database or some form of Redis cache, but for our use case, we're just going to store them locally in a variable. We're just going to call this refresh tokens, and we're going to set this to an empty array. I'm going to initialize this with let, just like that. And now this is not a good idea to do in production because every time your server restarts, this is going to be emptied out, but it's a lot easier to show you and demonstrate with than creating an entire database just to store these tokens. And the first thing we need to do is every time we create a token, just like down here, we just want to set our refresh tokens dot push, and we want to push in that new refresh token we just created. So now we have a record of that refresh token. And all we can do inside of this token is check if that token actually exists. So first we want to say if refresh token is equal to null, we want to return our status down here. So we can say res.send, whoops, send status. Let me just close out of this section over here. This is going to be a 401 status. Now the next thing we can do, whoops, if I spell things correctly, is we can check if our current refresh tokens includes that refresh token that we got sent to us. So what this is saying is, do we have a valid refresh token that exists for this refresh? Essentially, does this refresh token still valid? Have we removed it or is it still good? And if it does not exist, what we want to do is again, return saying that they do not have access. So we're going to send a status, this time saying 403. Now, if they get all the way past all those checks, we can actually verify this refresh token. So we can just say refresh token. We want to get that secret variable, so process.env.refresh token secret. And of course, we're going to have an error as well as our user object being returned inside of this callback function. And of course, we want to check our error first. And if we have an error, we can just return that error. So we can say return. And we want to send down a status of 403, very similar to our normal authentication. But now what we can do is actually create our access token. We can say const access token is going to be equal to generate access token. And you would think we can just pass this user object, but this user object actually contains additional information such as the issued at date of our token. So we actually need to get just the name. So we can say we want to get the name and the user.name that we were passing down just this raw user object and not all that other additional information. Now we can return that information by just sending res.json of our access token, just like that. And now we're finally ready to test this. So if we go over here, and we log in Jim, you can see we get both a refresh token and an access token. If we copy our refresh token, paste it into our token function, and we copy our access token and paste it up here, we can send some requests and you can see it's working and it's working, but eventually we're gonna get the forbidden status. 
we no longer have access, so let's create a brand new access token. We can copy that access token, paste it up here, and now we have access again for another 15 seconds, and eventually we're going to lose access. And you even notice that these are on different servers. This is port 3000, and these are on port 4000. So our authentication, where we log in and create refresh tokens and handle refreshing our tokens, all happens on a different server than our actual API, which is great. Now the next thing I want to talk about is how to actually de-authenticate refresh tokens. Because right now, forever and ever and ever, users just click the send request button, create infinite access tokens for users, no matter what, and as long as they have that refresh token, they can do that. So in order to prevent this, we need to have some form of delete function. We're just going to call this a delete here, and we want to do, for example, log out. And what this is going to allow us to do is actually delete those refresh tokens. And this is really easy. Normally you'd have to delete them from some database, but since we just are storing them in a variable here called refresh tokens, we can just say we want to set our refresh tokens equal to a filtered version of our refresh tokens, where all we're doing is we're just checking. Let me just close out of this here. We're just checking to make sure the token that is inside our refresh tokens is not equal to our request dot body dot token that we pass up to it. And then all we want to do is just send a status. And we're just going to send 204 saying that we successfully deleted this token. And let's save that and actually make a request for that. So we can just say delete and we want to go to local, whoops, local host 4000. We want this to be logout. We want our content type to be JSON, of course. And inside of here, we need to pass that token. So let's actually do another generation here where we're going to log in our user. You can see we get an access token and we get a refresh token. Let's copy this refresh token over into this section. And we also want to copy it into this section for deleting. So we can actually refresh this token. As you can see, we're getting new access tokens and everything's working. But if we click to delete, you see we get 204, means it's successfully executed. And now when we try to actually create a new refresh token or access token, you can see it no longer works. And that's because we removed it from this list so the user no longer has access to it when they try to create a new token and it exits out right here when it's checking to make sure that refresh token already exists. And that's all there is to implementing JWT authentication in Node.js and Express. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.